It's Wednesday, December 15th, 2010. I'm Rim. I'm Scott. And this is Geek Nights. Tonight, the terrible anime, Apocalypse Zero. Let's do this. So, uh, my coworker today, he used to work uh, more downtownish in the Union Square area. I'd like to work down there. I kind of, mm. I really am sick of working in Midtown just for the fact that I can't get lunch for less than like 10 bucks. I also hate Midtown. But anyway, he really wanted to go back down there to eat lunch, like at these places he used to eat lunch at, right? Because he, he doesn't come to the city every day. You know? Uh oh. Is this one of those, the place he remembered being good wasn't good? No, the place he remembered being good was too good. Uh, so trouble. We, we went down to this burrito place. I forget the name of it, but I know exactly where it is. So I could take you there. And it's basically. Uh, so if on a scale of if zero is Baja Fresh and five. Why, why is Baja Fresh zero? Baja Fresh I is hate Baja Fresh. Really? It's well, maybe the. I mean, the, Baja Fresh is way better than Qdoba. By like a zillion. I actually prefer Qdoba. And you know what? Qdoba's way, way better than Taco Bell. So I would, all right. <laughs> I was saying if we set the scale, zero being the minimum acceptable as Baja Fresh. All right. And five is like a Chipotle. All right. Where is this place? Well, I mean, it's, I would compare it to Cafe Maya, but the th- problem is, is that Cafe Maya is, almost, is like a different kind, right? Cafe Maya is like a sit down meal. And this is clearly a lunch burrito kind of place, right? But in terms of lunch burrito kind of place, so far, number one in New York City. Absolutely. Really? No question at all. I am intrigued. The, the burrito, though, I got the California burrito, was so ginormous, right, that I was unable to finish it, and a good 15 to 20% of it was left uneaten. So and, where, where did this end up? Uh, it ended up, uh, I don't know. You threw it away? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, not I in the d- fridge, not saving I it. I didn't want to, but it was pretty much like there is no way I'm going to eat this ever because it's just so big and my stomach was so full. I've pretty much done the mushroom and ring. And pretty of- much the refrigerator at work is ho ho horrendous. <laughs> I pretty much wandered in every direction that I can reasonably walk to, eat somewhere, and walk back within an hour or so. Mm. And I'm running out. Actually, of we places the to subway eat. going, taking the subway down to Union Square. It actually took surprisingly not much time. I've done that a couple of times, never to eat, always to like go to a particular store or something. Yeah, because we just pretty much went down, ate, and came back. It didn't take much time at all, and we sat down and ate. You know, and there was a Muji store down there I didn't know about. And it, oh, the, the, that's how I know where the burrito place is, because they're right next to the Muji. We'll have to go check this place out. However, after we ate at the burrito place, we went to a place I think was called City Bakery, and because he had remembered the best hot chocolate being there. All right? So we went and got this hot chocolate, and they had two varieties. Regular, which is dark chocolate. Which, that's the default. <laughs> and milk chocolate, which is not the default. And for 50 cents, you can get a marshmallow, which was... They made the marshmallow, and they cut a big marshmallow cube. And was dropped. the marshmallow made out of marshmallow? I don't know what it was made out of. Or was it a fake marshmallow like most marshmallows? But it was a real marshmallow that they made. Uh, if they made it, then it's not a real marshmallow. Whatever. Marshmallow is a plant. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> uh, How was this hot chocolate? You're, you're leaving me in suspense. It was I mean- basically... Uh, I don't know if I would really qualify it as hot chocolate, right? Because it was so insanely delicious. It was basically... A candy bar in a cup? Yeah, it was a <laughs> melted chocolate bar in a cup that was like the best, you know, like See, an ultra high quality bar of dark chocolate melted in a cup, just the right temperature, not burning you, not cold, right? And it, ha- it was thinned it out. It was just right. It was thinned out, you know, just enough that it, you know, wasn't... It was like on the border, like any thicker would have been undrinkable, but it was just on the drinkable side of thickness. See, and um, then the giant marshmallow cube was amazing, but I could only eat like two bites of it because by this point my stomach was still 100% full. You're the one who made the choice to get that after having not finished the burrito. And it's still 100% full, so uh, I'm pretty full. <laughs> I'm curious because Le Café Henri has some pretty damn good hot chocolate. We'll have to go and or, check. Or Chocolat Show. But basically, this bakery place, not only they have this hot chocolate, but pretty much everything else they had in terms of cookies and muffins and all that stuff. Like, this is the kind of place that I could go and eat a different thing every day and never get bored. And it was wicked crowded. So, yeah. And they had uh, this little tiny room in there that was the chocolate room. And it was like this little closet of chocolate. It was What, very- like it was made out of chocolate? No, it had chocolate for sale in it. It was a little tiny closet. 
and you would go in there and get a chocolate. And it was you'll see it if you ever go down there. All right, all right. So in a in a geek fight, an anime geek fight, I happened to watch with Emily last night. The Professor Layton movie, Professor Layton and the Eternal Diva. I'm still playing the third uh, video game. Layton Kyoju to Ayen no Utahime. Yep. It was okay. It was, it, it was, was beautiful. It, was, it was, it was it like the video games? Um, Not to spoil, there is a point not that far in where an evil voice appears and a projector projects the f- zero, zero, 001 on the wall and the voice says... Your first puzzle is this. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. It was fun. It was beautiful. Uh, I'd, ha- I'd recommend watching it, but it really just made me want to watch Lupin and the Castle of Cagliostro again <laughs> because it seemed to homage that a couple of times. Yeah, I could definitely see the, the similarities there. Yeah, but Lu- Cal- Cagliostro was a thousand times better than this, which means this is that still makes an me a really anime. wish. That makes me really wish there were new good Lupins. We haven't watched the last like five. I or heard six. they were not, but they're not a quality. You know, it's not like Fuma conspiracy. All right. You know, Fuma, as good as it is, doesn't really hold up as well as say Cagliostro. Well, uh, yeah, that's like you or know, Mamo. Gee, man, this bar of gold doesn't hold up as well as that bar of platinum. Oh, I believe you mean the bar of Babylon gold. <laughs> So yeah, it's an okay, like, A-, minus B plus animated movie, and you know our thing, it's an anime movie, there aren't that many, watch it, god damn it. Yeah. Also, it's on Pirate Bay. <laughs> is it anywhere legally? I have no I idea. I guess is there a Japanese, there must be a Japanese DVD that's legal, right? Actually, it was released within theaters in Germany and Spain. Interesting. And Singapore. Very interesting. Yeah. Is the game a big seller there? I have no idea. All right. Good to know. One uh, thing, though, uh... The weird, kind of almost romantic, homosexual, odd undertones between Leighton and that kid, they're still there. Yeah. Also, Leighton's dot eyes, I realized he's the only one with dot eyes. There's this one scene where someone, like, he notices something, like, someone's talking, and that scary, blank expression, dot eye face, slowly turns, (laughs) regards this, and then slowly turns back. That was the closest thing to a Leighton rape face I have ever seen. Mm Mm-hmm. So anyway, the biggest news in the anime world, right, is uh, that the Tokyo Assembly passed this bill that was the Youth Ordinance Bill. And the summary of what this bill does, at least one of the things it does, from uh, the Anime News Network, right, which is the, really the only place to get any news about this in English. Basically the Anime News AP Wire. Yes. It prevents the sale and renting of, quote, harmful publications, materials that are sexually stimulating, encourage cruelty, and or may compel suicide or criminal behavior... To people under wait, the, wait, wait, to wait, people I, under the age of eighteen. I've got a, a, a real translation of that law. It hereby bans the majority of Japanese media. It would require the industry to also regulate manga, anime, and other images, except for real life photography, that unjustifiably wait, 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 glorify or exaggerate certain sexual or pseudo sexual acts. So, except for real life photography, that's a very specific exception. And if I go back to cell animation, can I not just say that it is that my movie is a collection of thousands upon thousands of still photographs of paintings? Good question. Uh, another section of the revised bill allows the government to directly regulate above images if the depicted acts are also considered to be excessively disrupting of social order, such as rape. Uh, and that's pretty much... I read almost the entire uh, Anime News Network article. So much for Rape Man or right. Kazuo Koike or... So- yeah. The, Anything I like. The other additional news. Not that I like Rape Man. No. The additional news about this, right, is that uh, many, many manga publishers are now basically boycotting the Tokyo Anime Fair, including the big boys like, you know, Shueisha and such and such. Damn. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, it just sort of reminds you that, hey, look. Japan is loaded with censorship. You know, people always, you know, we're always complaining about when there are censorship sort of things happening in the U.S. And there are some. There are, in fact, quite a few. But we have that pesky First Amendment that means we always win in the end. Remember, the thing is, we still, censorship-wise, have it a lot better than a lot of other places. It's not the best in the world. I'm pretty sure, like, didn't Iceland win the award for best freedom of the press? Yeah, Scandinavia pretty much has freer press, only because the United States is really bad about boobs. Yeah, but st- even so... As in, uh, we're obsessed with them, and we don't like anyone to see them on TV. Yeah. The United States is still doing pretty good, and while this Tokyo ordinance probably won't affect us in any way, really, 
Uh, and while, you know, and uh, just, you know, to anyone out there who's like, listen, Japan's loaded with pedophiles and all this shit. So because their societies that way, they you got to do something like this. And to that, I have to say, well, you know, if you believe in freedom of speech and freedom, right, while you might be banning Nymphet, you're simultaneously banning, say, Akira. And that's not cool. I don't remember that scene where Akira rapes a little girl, though. Uh, there is rapes in Akira. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The manga and the uh, the animes. But not pedophile And also rape. attempted rape and boobage and violence <laughs> and suicides and pretty much everything that is made. Akira would not be allowed to be sold to anyone under the age of 18 by this law. We'll One of the see. most famous, most significant mangas ever created. In fact, a great many Tezuka mangas would not be allowed, right? I'm pretty sure we could still get Ambassador Magma. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, if this kind of thing, you know, repulses you. Write you, to your representative. And also send money to the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund. The Comic Book Legal Defense Fund is one of the pretty much pure good charities that there is out there. Yeah. So, you know, I send them monies. You send them monies, too. And then the next time something like, you know, what was that guy, Handley? Who uh who got arrested for oh, having in Canada? Yeah, well, no, it was it was in the U.S., wasn't it? There's a bunch of that going on in Canada because Canada has weird laws about yeah. yeah. So the next time someone gets you know busted for having hentai's, uh, they'll have lawyers, and uh, you know, we if we all chip in, it won't be one person paying a zillion dollars for lawyers, but everyone else, everyone who cares, paying twenty dollars. But anyway, things of the day. So uh, this video has been stuck in my head in the song, you know, Ignorance is Bliss. It's this animation someone made to a song that has to do with Mario and Luigi in the Mushroom Kingdom. I'm pretty sure this is already a thing of the day. Uh, I searched the archive. It is, in fact, not. All right. So just to be sure, Ignorance is Bliss is a good video. You should watch it. You know, like all those internet videos, it, it's good. But my real thing of the day is the story behind that. White Knuckle Scorin, what? spelled with an apostrophe at the end, okay. White Knuckle Scorin was a comic book and CD put out by Nintendo in, I believe, 1991. All right. And it's awful. All right. It's awesomely awful. But if you watch that video to Ignorance is Bliss, that was a song done by a band called The Jellyfish, which no longer exists. And no other song on the CD that that song appears on has anything to do with Mario, Luigi, the Mushroom Kingdom, or even Nintendo, as far as I can tell. And as far as the internet says, they're all terrible songs, except for Ignorance is Bliss. It but is pretty terrible, also. I thought it was a good song. It has, like, a good part, but that's it. I don't know. I like it. I like it in, in conjunction with the animation. Mm. So... If you wondered what the hell the deal was with that, because it kind of had, like, the animation, which was not made by the band and has nothing to do with the album, kind of tells a story that fits with it. The actual story is told in the comic that I have all the scans for you here. Oh, how about that? It's pretty terrible. <laughs> go figure. So there you go. Ignorance is bliss. Great. Um, so... There's this video. It's also Mario related. You know, we used to do a ton of Mario. It, it, it's weird that Mario is so heavily used. You know, and pretty well. I guess it's not that much of a surprise. Right? At one point, Bowser tries to cast a spell, but because he's ignorant and he can't read, he gives it to Lenny Koopa to cast All right, it. Anyway, so Lenny Koopa casts it wrong. Is, you don't need to tell this story. And turns Mario and Luigi into knights. We used to do things of the day, and I, it felt like in the olden days of Geek Nights that the things of the day would be like it would be a Mario related thing almost every other show. You know, so is a double dose of Mario. <laughs> Why the fuck not? It's his anniversary. Wow, it's right? all it's top favorited on YouTube right now. What? The your thing of the day. Yeah, this thing is all over the internet. If you haven't seen this already, I mean you're just not on the internet. It's, it, but it's got about half it's as so, many views. It, it's so good, you know, that it's uh it deserves all those views it's got. It's got about half as many as the Yogi. So Bear I want to make sure video. that every last person who might want to see it does not miss it while it's big on the internet. Basically what these people did is they basically mashed up the Mushroom Kingdom with a generic gangland violence movie and created sort of like this uh, trailer-ish short movie kind of uh, 
It's more like a montage of an entire movie. You know movie. what it is? It's what the Mario Brothers movie should have been. Yeah, the the really bad one. And that's the thing that's so great, that's, that's so shocking about this short little, I guess it's a machinima, right? You know, is that whoever put this together did a better job times a thousand than a big, full-budget Hollywood production was able to do, right, with Mario. They did it with, like, a video game... And some doodling and some voice acting. And you gotta you, watch YouTube. all the way to the end. It's me, Mario. It's a me, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty high quality. It's very high quality. It drops jokes. It's 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 all around A plus. So the meta moment. We're actually running out of the first series of Geek Nights t-shirts. So if you did want one. I'd one, suggest two, three, four, ordering it soon. I see like eight or nine on the floor there. Yeah, That's but it. we're almost out of mediums. Oh, snap. Yeah. Are we out of any other size? We're out of smalls already. All right. You so know, it's funny. The all choices this... are medium, large, and extra large. If you look at the listeners, the people who are asking for XXXLs and up tend to be Tuesday listeners. And <laughs> Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, rim. <laughs> it's all rim, but it's, I got nothing to do with this. But I know <laughs> that, <laughs> that we got more than three times as many requests for baby dolls as we did for XXXLs. That's good. I'm going to cater to the girl demographic before I cater to the XXXXXXXL demographic. I agree. So if you want a Geek Nights t-shirt, buy them before they sell out or else you have to wait until we reorder them because we already promised that we'll order another run if they sell out. Mm-hmm. So you'll get them no matter what. But that doesn't mean, right? See, the thing is, don't go, don't go, oh, they're going to reorder them, so I don't need to order one now. I'll just wait till they reorder, and, and no matter what, I'll get one. The thing is, it, it's going to take a while for that reorder to come through. Yeah, you know me. So if I you, don't do shit. And also... If it's in my queue, I just don't do it for like a year. Yep, and also you can help us out a lot if we know how many we need. We can do a better job of ordering the right number on the reorder. We've so, also got a couple more t-shirts coming, but we're not going to order them until If you want to help out. us out, order ASCP. If you just don't care, then, or if you don't even want one, just don't even bother, but, you know. I think you're going to like uh, the two more t-shirts we got to come in. We got the two more t-shirts on body. All right, what other uh, meta moments we got? The book club book is Michio Kaku's Hyperspace, a fantastic journey through hyperspace. All right. Uh, Are there any uh, conventions we're going to? We're going to be at MAGFest. We're going to be at PAX East. We're going to be at probably Anime Boston. We're going to be at Kineticon. We're going to open panel submissions to Kineticon pretty soon. The new website's coming along. All right, we're going to go to ZenkaiCon. We're going to be at ZenkaiCon doing anime panels. I think it's the week after PAX East. We're going to submit panels to Otakon. We'll see if they... That's a long time for now. Forget that. We're, we're going to see we're, if they can. Let's only worry about through, like, April, May here, right? We'll do one quarter at a time. The most upcomingest panel con thing we're doing is at MAGFest. Yep, which is very soon, actually. I got to... About I gotta that. remember which panel we're doing and then make yeah. sure I got the slideshow ready. It should be fun, I believe. Um, also, if you're not going to MAGFest but you're in the New York City area, the double recess is that same weekend. So if you miss out on music and gaming down in Virginia, you can get plenty of gaming up in New York City. Recess being the Nerd NYC recess, which is RPGs in two sessions for an entire day. Yep. And then another day. Because mm-hmm. it's the double recess. Indeed. I'm sad we're missing that one. Yeah. Oh, well. Any so, other, any other things you can think of for meta? Ah, uh, fucking Apocalypse Zero! I swear to God. All right, so I just yeah, I want to say you know pretty much every other anime podcast in the world has already discussed Apocalypse Zero, and because they discussed Apocalypse Zero to such great hilarious, uh, you know, just hilariousness. We are not up to the level of doing the Dave and Joel talk about Twenty Four for an hour and somehow have reviewed Apocalypse Zero. Right. Nor are we the Daryl Surratt talking about the history of the manga. No. But, uh, basically, because of those people like that, Scott Johnson downloaded Apocalypse Zero. He, or he acquired it, right? Now, he only and watched... And because we were at his house and bored <laughs> in his basement, we were looking for an anime to watch, somehow um, Apocalypse Zero got turned on. I believe he came down, he's like, you should watch this. And he had only seen... A little bit past the tit bear. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, most people don't make it past the tit bear. <laughs> so anyway, somehow, uh, you know, it's only, what, a three-episode OAV? Two. Two? Two 40-minute episodes. Wow. So because it was only two 40-minute episodes, we watched the entire thing in one go. Well, it was on the TV, and everyone was watching it and kind of making fun of it. 
And everyone agreed, yeah, this is terrible. We should turn it off. We should watch something else. There were like, I don't know, eight or nine of us down there. Everyone else was upstairs basically shouting down to us, why the fuck are you watching that? Just turn it off. What's wrong with you? So we never turned it off. In fact, at one point when we said, hey, we should turn it off, I don't know who said this, but someone said, and I quote, you can't turn it off until I find out why that chick is a dude in the flashback. Uh huh. So we watched it to the end, and we found out why the chick was a dude in the flashback. That was kind of disappointing. That was like the only thing we found out. I regret nothing, however, because Apocalypse Zero was bad, bad enough to where normally when we review an anime, right, on the Anime News Network, I'll like pull it up to remember like who the character designer was or whatever. And I'm always surprised that the ratings are overwhelmingly positive, even on shows that I think are terrible. Apocalypse Zero, almost all bad reviews. The worst possible rating is the most used rating for Apocalypse Zero. All right, now see, the thing with Apocalypse Zero, right, is that it's not so bad it's good. And it's not so bad, like, Odin, like, where you're just like, kill me now, this is so t- painful to watch, it's right? It's brutal. It's, it's just brutally, like, it, it's just, you know, it's it's painfully bad. It's not boring, oh my god, when is it going to be over? It's just like, oh, that's so terrible. Oh, that's the worst thing I've ever seen. Oh. Like, Ichi the Killer was it's horribly like, violent. It's, be- it's like, you don't want to watch Apocalypse Zero the way you don't want to be stabbed. In the face. But yet, at the same time, as you're being stabbed in the face, you're fascinated by the process. With a, with a rusty spoon. You, like, you cannot help but be fascinated by what has been wrought onto your eyes. Yeah. Apocalypse I Zero. I imagine, like, if I was like if, like, if I was stabbed in the gut, right? Like, most of my brain would be like, oh! But at least part but of a, you is like, very, so that's very, what this is like. Exactly. A very small part of my brain would be like, that's what stabbing's like. Well, that being, That's what being stabbed is like, <laughs> right? And that's Apocalypse Zero is basically, it's like, ow, oh, goddamn. Now oh, I know so what that... being stabbed in the eye is like. Exactly. So if you've read The Prince of Nothing, which is one of our first book club books, uh, the sequel, the, you know, the second set of books, the, the non-man erratics, this is obviously, you either know this or you don't. Apocalypse Zero is most memorable. (laughs) And I have decided that if something is bad but memorable, it is not actually bad. Because if something writes itself into your memory indelibly... There is something to learn from Apocalypse Zero. While it is not, you know, an entertaining (laughs) uh, way to spend, you know, 80 minutes of your life... At least I've learned that if you cut a guy's karaoke dick off, that is most of the way to killing him. Yes, it it is educational. (laughs) (laughs) So, so basically, <laughs> right, let me sum up Apocalypse Zero, right? So the basic story is that you have a guy, and it's an anime, so he has superpowers, and he puts on a metal suit of armor that gives him wicked powers of fighting, even though he's good fighting without it. He's, but he doesn't wear it. He's ultra fighting when he wears it. But he's, he doesn't wear it all the time. He fights without it sometimes. In fact, he fights the tit bearer without it. Yeah, he doesn't need it. He doesn't wear it for all. He's good with fighting without it, but he puts it on for super fighting. You know, it's like a transformation kind of thing. Yeah. And basically, he goes to, it's, it's like a post-apocalyptic world, but for some reason, right, kids just walk to school in a group like normal. It's like this normal school. And They're they, walking through like and a they fist also, of the North Star landscape. Right, it's like they, they, school is normal, and the places, the houses they live in are normal, but in order to get from one to the other, they have to walk through the fist of the North Star world. Now, the schools have guards who are highly trained to keep people who aren't students away from the school. But they do a very bad job. Oh, they do a really good job until Tactical Evil shows up. You're right. And uh, basically, uh, they're, every day when they go to school, they're harassed by some horrible monster, and this guy fights them. And uh, basically, the course of the two OAV episodes is pretty much him fighting multiple evil monsters. And the thing is, that really makes this show stand out, it's like, uh, is that all of these evil monsters are horribly, you know, they're obviously from the same dimension as the Overfiend. Right, they are they are as sexually charged as they are violently charged. Now, what is funny is Scott Johnson, who you know told us he turned this on and left it for us to watch, continuously says it's not sexual, as the dude with the dragon dick. <laughs> I think that was the third dude. Well, I mean, okay, so there was a bear with like twenty. Well, the, there was a bear with twenty not, tits. It was, it was not a bear. It was a tit bear. Okay, so there was a, a bear whose body consists entirely of tits. Filled with acid. Re- relative of the dick wolf. Same, same <laughs> genus. Uh, and then uh, he fights against, you know, the, the famous, you know, anime's craziest deaths. Gigantically large, fat woman with the incredibly scary, you know, body parts. The woman who 
apparently we didn't get to see this from anime's craziest deaths. She rapes young boys and then rips their faces off by kissing them and yeah. then eats them. Yeah. And then makes pasties with their faces. And she basically uses like their entire body as, you know, a dildo. Which is pretty great. Which is what, the you fact ha- what you'd have to do if you were gi- so gigantic. So this giant woman shows up and she's, you know, harassing these kids. She's basically going to kill them all. And then one of them looks up and kind of zooms in on her nipple. And you see this vaguely face-shaped thing. And they're like, Tanaka, no! <laughs> like, how could you recognize someone's face? I don't know, but it's horrific. And then what's the next thing he fights? Was it the dragon dick guy? No, that was the third guy. The next one, there's the, there's the scary nurse. But before that, there's the big guy with the karaoke dick. Uh, remember this remember. Kar- karaoke dick and dragon dick I, are two I, completely I watched a lot monsters. of this show from my mind. You understand? I tried pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> so let's zoom back a bit, because, you know, there's flashbacks all the time. And what, what's weird is that in the flashbacks, there's this, these two guys who are learning to fight with these suits or whatever. But in the rest of the show, one of them's a woman. There's no explanation. Yeah, basically the guy has, like, what's a sister or a cousin or something? They keep right? calling him Mr. I forgot everyone's names in this right. show. Right, so the main character guy has some sort of sister who is the big bad guy. Right, you know, who all who has another suit of armor that's the same kind of suit of armor, and he or she is the head of tactical evil. I think it used to be a she. No, it was a guy first. It was a guy first, then it became a woman's body, but it's still a guy. Yeah, it, like it got tits, but it didn't cut off the dick. Well, we don't know about so the it's dick. A fu- it's a Futanari. Ironically, guy. we never find out because toward the end, when they're fighting the dragon dick guy, when the dragon dick gets cut off which mortally wounds him, (laughs) he or she then takes over that guy's body to fight the main character and notes the fact that the dick is missing. Yeah. And that this is really inconvenient. (laughs) (laughs) The show is awesome. I guess if your your best attack was the rape attack, then it would be pretty inconvenient if you're a rape utensil. They don't use dicks for that. The one dick is just a dragon, (laughs) and the other guy whips it off and actually sings karaoke into it because it is, in fact, a microphone. Mm-hmm. There's also the nurse who has the two dick tits, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the nurse. <laughs> Doesn't the nurse no, the nurse like tries to befriend them, and then it's like, oh my god, it wasn't actually a nurse. Well, she's trying to eat them with her vagina. Yeah, yeah. This show's not safe for work. <laughs> the show's not safe for anything. No one should watch Apocalypse Zero. You should just read all the reviews about it. Listen well, I to think all the what reviews. you need to do is you need to see. It. You should look at a still picture or a short video of any one of the horrific monsters in the show, right? And then once you see the style of any of these horrific monsters, you'd be like, oh, I see that style. Okay, then you're good. The character designs are pretty awesome. Everyone has this continuously surprised look on their face. Yeah, I mean, like, it is an OAV, and the the production quality in terms of, like, animation is actually surprisingly high. The the karaoke dick is really well animated. Yeah, it's like, whoa, animated, you know, (laughs) shit I don't know. The thing is, it's an OAV, so th- this was not on TV. It was not in movie theaters, right? If someone wanted to watch this, that means they had to go to the store and buy it on, I guess, DVD if or If you watch VHS. this, you must have already been a fan of Takayuki Yamaguchi's manga Apocalypse Zero. Yeah, it's like, who actually went to the store and bought this, right, intentionally? And then, I guess it became big in the U.S. because of the, uh, you know, the 90s when it was all about you know, violent, oh my god. Ultra-violent anime was like the marketing technique. Yeah, they just, they were like, oh my god, you gotta watch this anime, it's so violent. So people in the U.S. bought it, and that's... See, the thing is, I feel like, you know, watching Vampire Hunter D or Ninja Scroll, those were ultra-violent, but more in the Ichi the Killer way. Apocalypse Zero is this brand new kind of violence. Apocalypse Zero is not in the same category as Ichi the Killer? What are you talking about? I don't think it is. Ichi the Killer is realistic, scary violence. How is it not in the same category as Ebola Syndrome? I, for some reason, they feel different. The, the, the way the violence is presented in Apocalypse Zero is so just fucked up. <laughs> How is Ebola Syndrome God not damn it. fucked up? Because at least God he, damn it. At least Ebola Syndrome, in the end, the guy shoots the guy. And, I don't know, Ebola Syndrome kind of made sense from a plot perspective. What? There was a plot. <laughs> okay. The guy went around infecting people with Ebola because he's a dick. Yeah. That was the plot. So what's the plot of Apocalypse Zero? No, the plot of Apocalypse Zero is that this dude trains his two sons to wear this armor. To train them, 
he basically makes them badasses by fighting the tit bear, and then he locks each of them in a room naked with the armor. And before he locks them in there, he's like, here's the armor. You'll figure out what to do. And the armor hurts really bad. So he's like, but there's this long scene where the guy's laying in there in this room just naked, and the armor is just kind of laying there next to him in the room, and he's like, all right, I don't know what to do now. And yeah, each piece of the armor he puts on gives, causes incredible Well, the whole pain. time you're thinking, is he going to have sex with the armor? Yeah, yeah, there's, you could say that he does, metaphorically. But then he's like, I don't know what there to do. There is a piece of armor that applies to the crotchal area. I don't know what to do, armor. What do you want from me? And then he touches it. He's like, you're so cold. Should I, should I warm you up? And he starts hugging the armor, and then the armor's arm falls off, and he's like, should I, should I stick my hand in the hole where your arm just fell off? Oh, you're nice and warm. And it's, you see what I mean? There's nothing like that in Ichi the Killer. Ichi the Killer made me cringe because it was realistic. This, I couldn't even look away. I was just like, what's going to happen next? Mm. All right, his dick's out. Oh, it's a karaoke microphone. He's singing, oh, I guess that's his power, singing into his karaoke dick. Like you just everything that happens is so much more over the top than the previous thing that happened that you cannot help but just you have to know what happens next. The thing you have is to like know who, how far down it goes. Who thought of this, right? Because like no matter how hard I try, uh, I told you who did the, uh, the manga. manga, right? But it's like imagine if you're sitting there and you're like, all right, I need to think of the most fucked up thing I can think of. Right? You're not even going to come close to this. Right? <laughs> I mean, like, I don't care how creative you are. Find me the most creative person. Like, I don't know. Fucking, you know, even something like uh, The Boys or Preacher, right? Get Garth Ennis. Be like, Garth Ennis, think of the most fucked up thing you can think of. The most fucked up thing in any Garth Ennis comic I've ever read. And the I've, first I've read two bosses of, of Apocalypse Zero beat that. Don't even come close to even the tit bear. Right? So. <laughs> It's like, you know, you're probably thinking much like with Utena when we said the Utena movie that, yeah, at the end, it's just there's a naked car and you're like, naked car. What do you mean? You're, that must be some sort of metaphor or allegory. Now, it's naked car. This is a tit bear. Yep. <laughs> but I don't know. even. God damn it. Apocalypse Zero. OK. Like, God damn. All right. So, you know, I don't know. Like. I don't know if there's much more to actually say about Apocalypse Zero itself, other than I'm glad it was only two away. Oh, it's interesting. Just... Had it been longer, I would not have watched it. I mean, if, if Fist of the North Star were like that, I would not have watched it. But because it was so short, it was like an achievable goal. I looked at it and thought, you know what? I can, without much expenditure, see the entirety of this train wreck. Yeah, it's less time than a movie, and you're watching it with other people in the room, so you're all suffering together. And coolly enough, people were in the room who I would not have expected would have watched it. There were people in the room who I thought would have been disgusted and walked out. Nobody walked out. Nope. Some people came downstairs and then went back upstairs. <laughs> Very quickly. <laughs> uh, one, one person who will remain nameless walked down like, what are you guys, oh my God, and just walked away. <laughs> And that was the tit bear. <laughs> wow. I'm glad that he walked down for, say, karaoke dick. <laughs> or dragon dick. Or when, when he punches the, the woman who eats the boys in the stomach and all those skeletons come out. Yeah. One of them is still kind of alive. I don't know how that works. Yeah, they knew who it was. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It was Tanaka again. <laughs> Whatever. I couldn't tell you the name of any character in nah, this show. I could not tell you the name of a single character in this show. But there's something, I couldn't even tell you the name of like the hero guy. But there's with something the to armor. it because it was short, and because it was crazy, and it you know a lot of anime that do crazy stuff. It's like going to Ripley's Believe It or Not. You're just staring at some ridiculous thing. But they peter out. Like if they're long or if they're not always getting more crazy, you get bored with it. You're like, all right, this is stupid. But because this trumped everything that came before, every scene trumped the previous scene. If you start watching, you're gonna see it to the end. And but because it was. You know, they it's like it's weird because usually you start quiet and build up to ridiculous. This starts out ridiculous, builds up to ultra ridiculous in 80 minutes, and then it's over. I have no desire to ever see more. I have no nope. desire to even look at the manga. Nope. None. I, Keep it away. <laughs> <laughs> I know all that needs to be known and more will not be uh will not be investigated. Oh my god, that that the woman is on the cover. I'm thankful this is an obscure OVA from a foreign land that will never see, uh, it will never be widely known across the world. 
I have this sinking feeling that we're helping make it much more well known. It doesn't matter. My only People warning need to, to be you warned. out there. They need to be warned. You can't just, you know, what if they watch it by accident? We're saving someone. You Well, actually, there was a point that was made that was interesting while we were watching, too. A nameless person said, and I quote, stuff like this is what made anime good in the 90s. No, it's not. Now, the, <laughs> it's what made anime the bad ensuing in the 90s. argument actually made sense that, yeah, Apocalypse Zero, god damn it. But it was crazy. It is different. There is nothing else like it. Mm-hmm. And what got me into anime was that it was crazy, it was different, there was nothing else like it. So there is a place in the world for things like Apocalypse Zero because you have to delve all the depths. You have to go in every direction with animation. You have to make every possible thing. Otherwise, we're going to have a million Moe shows and nothing else. I guess, maybe. I mean, that that's the best argument I can possibly pull out of my ass for why Apocalypse Zero exists. That's to prove a, to you that it can exist. That's a, that's a great argument you got there. It is, in fact, the apocalypse. Uh-huh. All righty. I think we're done. Yeah. God, this has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. Some burning wheel. You want to play? Why don't we play free market instead? It's easier to do one shot. I just want to do the sword first. Uh, that doesn't. That takes twenty minutes. Yeah, maybe Thelon's Rift too. You want to play in a Thelon's Rift? I could do Thelon's Rift. Gonna make it past the problem the is jam? I know everything already. Yeah, you knowing doesn't help. I gotta roll the dice. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, you know what the Bridge of Death does? I refuse to go on the Bridge of Death. It's the Bridge of Death. Belief one. <laughs> it's aptly named. I want I want the orb. <laughs> gonna change your belief now. Change your belief it, belief is now. Never I'm gonna go, go I'm gonna go back and see if there's another way to get there without using the bridge of death. <laughs> <laughs> because really it's the bridge of death. It's not the bridge of happiness or the bridge of long life. It is in fact quite the opposite. And I refuse to go on it. I love how even in the module it says the players will likely not make it past this point. <laughs> it's it's the bridge <laughs> of death. Those runes even tell you, stay off the bridge of death. <laughs> it's, it's like...